November 2, 2007, a Missouri Air National Guard F-15C broke up in flight near Boss, Missouri. The pilot, Major Stephen Stilwell, suffered a dislocated left shoulder and shattered bone in his upper left arm during the breakup, but successfully ejected from the airborne wreckage. Loss of the $41 million fighter led Air Force officials on November 3, 2007 to temporarily ground its fleet of more than 600 F-15s until an investigation could show cause for the in-flight breakup. The McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle is an all-weather tactical fighter designed to gain and maintain air supremacy over the battlefield. It was first delivered in November of 1974 and has since seen a variety of model designations from A to E. C and D models produced more than 46,000 pounds of thrust, close to the weight of the aircraft plus half of its fuel capacity. F-15 flew in the Persian Gulf in 1991 in support of Operation Desert Storm, where C model fighters accounted for 34 of the Air Force's 37 air-to-air victories. The Eagle is battle-tested and its airframe has displayed supreme integrity. During one training flight, similar to the one shown here, an F-15 was struck by another aircraft, shearing off the Eagle's right wing nearly at its root pilot of that eagle flying on one wing was able to return the aircraft, touching down safely on the runway at close to 250 miles per hour, roughly twice the F-15's normal landing speed. Nonetheless, investigators focusing on the November 2007 breakup quickly found that indeed the aircraft structure had failed in flight. Born of the investigation, Air Force animation depicts critical elements of the event. The image here shows the crash aircraft's flight path in the lighter color on the right with flight parameters displayed below. The inset at the upper right shows Stillwell's aircraft from the perspective of the pilot he was chasing at the time. For the most part, it represents what that pilot would have seen as he looked over his shoulder back at Stillwell's aircraft. Centered below the flight path imagery, an artificial horizon shows the pitch and roll of the accident aircraft as it maneuvered before the breakup. For his second engagement, Stillwell maneuvers in behind the second aircraft and eventually entered a nearly level right-hand turn, flying at approximately 450 knots. That happens here. Rolling past 90 degrees of bank, he strains under 6.6 Gs, turning hard right at 18,000 feet. The aircraft then shook violently. Stillwell rolled level, and the forward fuselage broke free. That's just how long it took to happen in real time. The Accident Investigation Board president found by clear convincing evidence the cause of the accident was failure of the upper right Langeron, one of four critical support beams running lengthwise in the aircraft. Langeron failed to meet blueprint specifications, increasing localized stress and leading to the formation of fatigue cracks that weakened the structure with every flight. Following the accident, every F-15 base conducted a series of detailed inspections and at least nine other F-15s have been found to have similar but not yet fatal cracks in their Langerons. As of January 9th, the Air Force approved 60% of F-15A through D models to return to service with no flight restrictions. As for the rest, the Air Force has reported it will remove some F-15s from its inventory, as fixing those aircraft has been deemed cost prohibitive. So, what does this all mean for the Air Force's F-15 Air Superiority Fighter? In the words of General John D.W. Corley, Commander of Air Combat Command, This isn't just about one pilot in one aircraft with one bad part, he said. I have a fleet that is 100% fatigued, and 40% of that has bad parts. The long-term future of the F-15, he said, is in question.